Yeah. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Ready Ready to here. Can we grab some water whenever that's possible? That'd be cool. So. That's quite the intro. Well, I, don't, I didn't know I was going to say it. <laughs> I, I could have just kept going and you could have stayed back oh, I heard there. It was SEC and I was almost going to turn around and run out. But, uh... <laughs> so, um, Jerry, besides Yahoo, how are things going? <laughs> I, I tell you, it's, uh, um, it's been a pretty amazing year. I think uh, I, I certainly didn't expect the year to be what it's been and uh, coming into it. Uh, thank you. Um, but I, look, I, I think that uh, uh, the environment which, which you know, we uh, are in today is extraordinary. I think what Yahoo's been through in 2008 has been extraordinary. Um, Sorry, I just I, uh, had to throw I, that uh, up there. I, 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 two, I see that. Two, two years ago... Is Brad Garlinghouse in the audience somewhere? Or? <laughs> well, two years ago, almost to this week, a, a particular manifesto came out right. called the Peanut Butter Manifesto. At that point, you were founder, uh, chief Yahoo, but you were not CEO. Through the sort of things that happened... We can lose the GIF now, thanks. Um, through the things that happened... Uh, because of that manifesto, or perhaps more accurately, just because it was time, you became CEO. Um, uh, Sue Decker uh, became your you know, president. Um, and there was a, quite a shakeup. Uh, a lot of people left, a lot of people joined. Um, but it was a very turbulent time. But I think if I'm reading the vibe, certainly, of people in this room and of the Valley, there was a sense that everyone wanted it to work out. Um, and then February of this year occurred. Um, and that was the Microsoft deal. What happened? Which part? Well, <laughs> yeah, that is a tough question, isn't it? What happened? Um, what happened with the Microsoft deal? Um, why didn't you take the $33 a share, Jerry? <laughs> Look, I, I, uh, I, I think everybody has replayed that. A lot of, you know, a lot of people have replayed that in their minds. I'm no exception. Um, I think there is a view that we, it was there for the taking, and I think there's a view that maybe we were trying to do something not to sell the company. Um, well, you did adopt a poison pill tax No, strategy. no, that's not what it is. We, uh, look, I mean, the idea of selling to Microsoft was something that we've known about, we've discussed. We, to this day, I would say that the best thing for Microsoft to do is to buy Yahoo. I don't think that is a bad idea at all. Um, I think that... Uh, Just at $40 a share, not... No, no, I think at the right, at the right price. Whatever the price is, we, we, were, uh, we were willing to sell the company. And I think um, the, the circumstances in which we were uh, involved in was one that they walked away from a, uh, from a public offer. And um, we were ready to negotiate. We wanted to negotiate a deal. We felt that um, uh, we weren't that far apart. But at the end of the day... Um, they withdrew, and they've since been very clear about not wanting to buy the company. Um, we, not only myself, but I think our board. You know, one of the things I think people don't really recognize throughout this is that we have a board. Um, we have a lot of obviously stakeholders in all this. We have shareholders, um, and we believe we were doing the right things every step of the way. Now. Everybody can look back and say, hey, you could have done this differently. You should have done this differently. You should have taken something. I, I would tell you there was nothing to take. Um, I would, would, you know, would, did we want to do a deal with Microsoft to sell the company? Yes. Had we been able to do that, I think we'd been very happy. Um, but it was not meant to be. Now, people will blame me, blame the company. You could blame Microsoft. I think but both sides are, are to blame for not having done this. Now, but there is, a, I think, a very real sense uh, that it was because of you that the deal didn't happen. You fought it, you didn't want it to happen, you thought the cultures couldn't work together, you didn't want to be purchased by Microsoft, that was an ego issue for you, was it not? Is that not no, true? No, look, I mean, people who know me will know me that I don't really have an, I don't have an ego about remaining independent versus not remaining independent. I think that... That strikes, that, that's a surprising statement to me. Okay, well, it is true, because I think, for me, I think that both as a shareholder, but as especially as CEO, my job is to figure out how to um, really find the right path for Yahoo. And, um, and so, the, so the debate at Yahoo has always been, or at least certainly through the, through the Microsoft process, um, about trying to understand 
what our alternatives are vis-a-vis -vis an acquisition, not because we don't want to do the acquisition, but really to understand how we can get an acquisition done on the right terms. Um, and uh, look, I, we can go back through the timeline. We have our version. The world thinks this, you know, whether they agree with us or not, it's a different story. But at the end of the day, we believe that um, there was a deal to be done. We believe that we were not that far apart. We obviously believe that um, they, they walked away because they saw something else that they didn't want to do. They were, they were, um, they, 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 and we went back to them. We went very clear, went back to them and said, look, even at the price that you were suggesting, are you guys willing to do the deal? And they said no. So I don't know what else we could have done. We could have done it earlier. We could have done it sooner. We could have done a bunch of other things. But you look at the process, it's very hard to argue that says that I didn't want to do something. Um, and that's something that I know I will be labeled with that forever. But I that's worked very hard to try to get Steve Ballmer to like be here yeah. right now. I did. Look, I, I, I couldn't I think, get I him if, on the stage. Well, I mean, look, I have, uh, and, and that's the thing. It's like I, I have a lot of respect for Steve, and we've had a lot of good conversations throughout this thing. And I don't, certainly from me, my perspective, it's not personal. I, I think it's really about whether we could have found the right thing to do together. And um, you know, you couldn't. So let's just talk about one other deal, and then we can, and, sure. and that's the one that, that fell apart yesterday. Right. Um, so one of the, I think people often see moves of large companies like Yahoo as related, and I think they, they see that, 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 that the deal with Microsoft didn't work out. You looked for ways to monetize uh, assets at Yahoo uh, that would improve the bottom line, and, and, and you've, you turned to Google. Um, and you had a 10-year deal that was announced, that deal, uh, as I understand it, a lot of long-term search uh, terms that you weren't monetizing particularly well at, right. at Yahoo were going to be monetized by Google. Um, what were the numbers in the hundreds of millions of potential uh, benefit to the, to the company? Right. Um, then it was modified last week, and then it fell apart today. What happened? Why did, did Google pull out? Because it certainly seemed that way. Yeah, you know, we were disappointed we were going through a process with the Department of Justice to um, get them to understand how this deal is a, a, a good deal from a marketplace standpoint. Um, we also uh, felt that um, uh, Google clearly decided that they did not want to stay in the deal, and we're disappointed with that. Um, but I, I think what's important about the Google deal is that, first of all, when we did it, um, we made it clear that this thing had to go through a justice department, so it was uh, purely incremental to everything else we talked about. So there was a lot of people saying, hey, you guys are, are, are now without a move, or you guys don't have incremental revenue that you said you're going to have. Um, none of that was in our sort of financial projections, and I think that's an important fact to state. Um, the other thing is, even when we started doing the, the discussion with Google, it was clear that this is, you know, two competitors um, uh, trying to compete more with each other by doing this. Um, and I think that's always been a question where uh, internally at Yahoo and externally, we were um, really trying to explain why this would work with a broader audience of, of advertisers and, and others. And like you said, this is a deal where we felt that um, if we were able to take advantage at our option, uh, Google's uh, listings, we would have um, a uh, better experience for users in terms of relevancy in, in the ads they see, and better experience for advertisers because they get to tap into inventory that Yahoo didn't have. And at the end of the day, for us, it was incredibly important for us to participate and compete vigorously in the search marketplace. Um, and throughout that period of time, even through, I think, uh, March to now, we continue to see our Yahoo search marketplace become more robust. And we've done a lot of great things with search in terms of the query side. Um, and so I, I feel like there is a, uh, a, a conception that because we didn't have the Google deal, we didn't, we're not doing well in search. And that, I think that's absolutely not true. We, we are actually doing better in search today than we were before this whole thing started. Um, why did Google pull out? I think you have to ask them. I mean, I think it's, it's certainly disappointing to us that um, uh, they didn't want to defend this deal. I think uh, it was certainly very defendable from our perspective. Uh, the government opposition to the deal was seemingly pretty robust. Um, did, did you believe in the thesis that, that they were no. advancing? Look, I mean, I, 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 uh, uh, it's interesting. I don't want to get into what Larry just talked about. But you know, I, I, I really thought that the government, in this case, um, does not understand our industry. Uh, they, they, they have a market definition that I think is too narrow. 
Um, and I think um, things like this tends to have uh, unintended consequence on an entire broader industry. So I, I clearly don't agree with what the, the viewpoint is, but, um, but they're the government. They can, they can decide on these things. And, um, well, but, they didn't have to, right? So, because Google. I understand. I mean, yeah. I, think, I think Google clearly felt like it wasn't going the way they wanted to go, so. Did you get a call first? <laughs> We, uh, or did you read it in the... No, no, no. We, 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 we certainly understand when okay. things were going to happen. Right. You know? Got it. These All press right. releases don't write themselves. <laughs> um, really? <laughs> Maybe they do. Well, I, I, I'm gonna, we're going to pivot in a second here, but I, I kind of want to ask you a, a, a personal question. Um, you mean these other ones weren't personal? <laughs> <laughs> Just you wait. Um, you founded Yahoo... 15 years ago, you, you're, you know, for the first eight to nine, 10 years, really the, the, the standard bearer for what it meant to be the internet. Um, you, you know, you made history, you made a ton of dough, um, more than, well, a lot of money. Um, you know, then you had this sort of crisis in 06, and you made a decision to come back as CEO. Why? And, and, and why are you CEO now? Like, why, 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 why do that to yourself? Well, I, and are you the right guy? I figured there was a, there was a question in there somewhere. <laughs> um, look, I, I, I've said this pretty openly. I, it, at first, it was 07 when, we, uh, when, I, when I stepped back in. Um, uh, and, and there's debate whether I was ever CEO. I think David and I were, for an instant, shared the CEO title in 95. So obviously, between starting the company until um, I, I was CEO last year, uh, I was not. And I felt that um, uh, clearly I was part of a company and, and, and contributed to it in a way that I felt very, very comfortable. Um, I did not, as I said back last summer, I did not make the decision of being CEO very lightly. And in retrospect, obviously, uh, having the company gone through what it's gone through, Clearly, um, I don't take my position very lightly. It's a very serious obligation and responsibility. Um, I wanted to make the change at Yahoo that I believe I could make. Um, and it's one of those things where if you um, are able to sort of look at what's happened inside Yahoo, and, and hopefully a lot of you have been at Yahoo, and certainly you've been at Yahoo, um, yes, there's been a lot of change. There's been a lot of people coming and leaving. Um, but the the plans in which we were trying to execute against from that last summer is being done in a way that I'm extremely proud of in the sense that we're rewiring Yahoo, we're creating Yahoo into a platform company. Um, that was the dream that I, I, I felt that I could achieve by being CEO. Um, and that is still the dream today. And I think that's somewhat lost underneath sort of all the external issues, but I, I feel that's the, the core um, core identification of what we wanted to accomplish as a company, to become a better platform company on the consumer side, and of course become a better company on the advertising side as a platform company. Um, I felt like we had the talent to do it. I felt like we had the market window to do it. And I feel that um, we have accomplished a lot of those things. Hopefully we'll get to talk about those. But, um, but, but to me, that was the moment in time that I really wanted to um, uh, make that change. And that's something that we've been working hard on and making some progress against. Um, six months into the th thing, we had the external events with Microsoft, and now we have this economy. Now, I, I don't regret any minute of what happened, even though it's not the most fun thing to go through. I think it's just, um, uh, and, and perhaps I can only talk about it because I've been there the whole time. You know, it's, um, it's a part of me, and, and some people say that's great, and some people say, well, you're just too close to it. I feel like I only know how to operate the way I know by really caring and being um, passionate about what I do. And I'm passionate about Yahoo, I'm passionate about its people, I'm passionate about the mission we've established. Um, and I'm willing to go through walls to do it. Um, and um, and I, I just feel that's, that's, the, that's the reason I'm there. Now, as CEO, one of your jobs is to declare a vision for the company and rally everyone to it. So what is the vision for Yahoo? You know, 
it has become increasingly clear to me, and it was clear last summer, but I think now it's in incredibly clear to us, which is Yahoo is a consumer brand. Um, we had a lot of other variations of this. We were probably not as focused. But to me, Yahoo is a consumer brand that allows people to get what they want from the internet in a way that only Yahoo could do it. Uh, we are much more focused around what we've been calling starting points. We've been even more focused around making those starting points more open so that people can be, um, uh, people can take Yahoo with them, but start with Yahoo. Um, and just the, 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 the events over the last three months in the world has really illustrated that people come back to Yahoo more often than before uh, because we are able to deliver them the kinds of things that they want. We have a long way to go. I, I understand a lot of the criticisms around Yahoo, not, uh, you know, are we the portal, or are we something else? Um, the, the reality is what's powering Yahoo is fun, fundamentally being rewired, redone, and what you will start to see, if not already, is a Yahoo that can really morph on the fly. And I think that's an important change for somebody with our scale. Um, that's really going to be, I think, critical. But, but, but to answer your question, Yahoo is that consumer starting point. That is what we are building the company around. So help me understand you know, a couple examples of, of what you mean. Um, for example, uh, two weeks ago, I think, uh, Yahoo OS or YOS or how do you, YOS? YOS. Uh -huh. um, uh, was uh, certainly not a new idea, but it was announced with its, get, tell us what that is and how that fits into what you're talking yeah. about. Well, look, I, I, the um, opening up the Yahoo uh, network to be a platform is something that is fundamentally different for Yahoo because we have never in the past operated as a platform. Um, so what Yahoo OS does is it allows um, uh, third parties over time to start to develop applications uh, for uh, Yahoo audiences. And the first thing to do, that, to do that is creating a way of linking people's profiles and creating the social graphs necessary within the Yahoo context. Well, isn't this just sort of a Facebook play? Yeah, no, look, it's very different from Facebook because what people go to Facebook for is very different than why they come to Yahoo. So you have to look at this as what do people go to Yahoo for? Largely content, a lot of communications, a lot of personal communications, um, and creating a way in which people now can sort of take that information, create, make some sense out of it through structure. And it's not just social for social sake. It really is trying to link in different ways of, in which Yahoo can benefit somebody else's experience, including third parties. And um, what we are seeing and what we're getting reviews on is that the developers really understand that developing apps for Yahoo is a different experience. It's not just to try to have the same experience that you would have on other sites. And no, so, so no zombie biting or sheep throwing? <laughs> I hope not. What's the response to advertisers on this? Because they're used to buying from discrete places, right? Does that, is it working? Is that, is that something well, that... We, we have seen um, that, you know, again, this is very early. We have seen that there are um, significant interest in this because where we are all sold out, we can always use more inventory, and advertisers want to buy more. And but if you're all sold out at Yahoo Finance, that doesn't mean an advertiser necessarily wants to buy in an unvariegated pool of... No, but the, but, the, but the idea is that we wouldn't give them that pool. We would try to figure out if Forbes.com have excess inventory or somewhere else that has very good inventory that have, you know. So the idea isn't to create bundles that don't make sense for the advertiser. The question is really, are there ways of discovering inventory that they would have otherwise not have access to? That's part of the problem right now, is an advertiser has to go to 15 different websites to come up with one buy that, that they have to figure out whether they're performing or not performing. We're, we're basically saying you can do that not just through one Salesforce. You could still do that on 15 different sites if you want. It's just you do it on the same system, and that the system, the platform, is out. Initially, the, the pool of inventory is what? It's got Yahoo inventory and where are you going to go next? So 
we're going to open it up to everybody uh, who has a website out here? Yeah, no, look, I mean, I think the, the, um, the vision around this is really making sure that we have the right quality of inventory and the right amount of liquidity to support the right pricing. And, um, and so what we, we are starting with is um, some of our newspaper partners um, because we believe the local market is the one that is uh, A, underserved, and B, there's not really good um, channels, and, and uh, we think newspapers clearly have some Well, great there's channels. definitely a liquidity problem with the newspaper business. I, I, I think so. That, if you can solve that one, you're. Well, you're I, I, <laughs> I'm not sure I want to solve all of the newspapers' problems, but I think on, as an online partner for them, we are. Seeing, on, their websites are growing very, very rapidly. Yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and I think that is part of the opportunity here is they are seeing growth in online as they're transforming their business online. Um, we, we're going to put a, a, a large part of Yahoo, the right parts of Yahoo, on in the system as well. Um, and we have a number of large partners that we've signed, and, and there will be other partners that we no, will be Now, many signed. of those come through the acquisition of Right Media, is that correct? Right Media is part of that, uh, is part of the way in which we, we create that liquidity in the marketplace. Um, but, uh, but, you know, we got partners like eBay and Comcast and other people that we already have um, that can be part of this in terms of creating the kind of inventory that allows this marketplace to develop. Now, there, there's a lot to talk about. I want to move on. We're, we're getting close on time, so if you guys in a couple minutes want to line up behind the mics, I'm sure you have some questions for Jerry, and he's grace, graciously agreed to take them, but not yet. Just hold on, I got a couple more, um, but stay there. Um, you remember the last time we spoke at Web2 it was about three years ago. Times were very different. Um, you had just bought Flickr. Uh, I, I don't know if Delicious had happened yet, but you know, uh, basically Yahoo was like the place where it, it was the IPO market for hot startups. You know, you didn't, didn't have to take your company public. You just had to get it to a certain scale and not have any vowels in your name, and Yahoo would buy you. Um, those days are over. Uh, uh, you know, not, it's not just your fault. <laughs> but uh, is Yahoo going to start buying again? Uh, are there, are oh, you, are, do you, yeah. you, you see things that you, you, you are interested in and, and, and are you on the prowl uh, looking for these things uh, again? Uh, absolutely. Because there was certainly a point where it seemed like Yahoo was buying really? all the cool stuff. Oh, okay. And yeah. then it stopped. I, I, I don't know how many, uh, I know Greg is out there somewhere, but we bought 40 companies this year. I mean, it, it, it is an important part of how we um, both deal with the sort of the startup community, but also as a way of um, um, growing and, and growing our product talent. Uh, it is very important to us. We've bought things on the advertising side, we've bought things on the consumer side. Um, perhaps they're not always as visible as Flickr or Delicious, but, uh, but that's constantly part of what we do. And um, um, so I, I would say that that is, that is probably a very important part of how we change Yahoo as we go along here. I mean, um, you know, I, I was a good example of Zimbra, and I know yep. Scott's here somewhere. Scott's now running our mail and communications group to have an ability to buy a company because uh, their product's fantastic, and that product is where, I think, where Yahoo's communication product ought to go, and lo and behold, Scott's running the group. So um, I just think that those are the kind of things that we always, we, we do all the time, and um, perhaps not as visibly, and, and maybe we should talk about it more. Yeah. Um, now, there are a lot of questions, uh, and so we're going to get to them. I didn't get to all mine, but I wanted to give you guys a voice, so I think you were first to step to the mic. Okay. Um, Jerry, you talked about extending your, your channels um, or your inventory for display ads and um, increasing the liquidity for that market. And there had also been talk when the overall Microsoft acquisition sort of went away of maybe a search deal, but there also seems to be this synergy between display ads and search where <coughs> display ads are kind of hard to monetize as well as search because they're hard to measure, but there's um, techniques emerging techniques where you can track um, visits um, or impressions from display ads to conversions to, you know, search uh, clicks. And if you do a deal with Microsoft or someone else in search, won't that make it more difficult to monetize the display ad business? 
Yeah, well, I mean, that's a, that's a, uh, a great question, and that's something that we are looking at, obviously, and what, what you're referring to is we have um, uh, really looked at search and display advertising, given that we have a strong position in both, certainly in display uh, and in, in search, where um, we have a number of cases probably increasing where um, display ads are helping search performance or search performance, search ads are helping display performance, um, and that uh, uh, the sales folks that we have now are more and more integrated in thinking through how to approach the budgets and dollars, et cetera. So that uh, this, the act of selling as well as the act of bundling sort of different search and display products and allow sort of conversions to increase, that is happening uh, certainly through, through the Yahoo platform. Um, I, I think that, you know, uh, if, uh, if we were to do something else with search, um, we hope we can continue to be able to do some, some of that, uh, but that's obviously part of the con consideration as we think through what does the future look like is it that cleanly between search and display and that there's no synergies, or how do you make up those synergies uh, in some other way, or, or, or there's no way to make it up? Um, Just, I don't think we've solved that question at all, but given the current path and given what we have, uh, we clearly see synergies between search and display and being able to take more dollars in the marketplace. Just for the record, there, there is nothing currently being discussed with Microsoft. I, yeah, I mean, there's no new news there. Because there was this discussion of a search deal, and then Bomber like right. sent out a note saying, "No, we're not talking about that." Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's any new news. Are you buying AOL? <laughs> I can't talk about that, John. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, but I have to kill you. <laughs> I might take that bullet just for the crowd. I know. I know. <laughs> anything for the anything for the conference. <laughs> all right, we'll talk out that. Um, all right, we have a question over here. Can we get on. the mic up? So, so Jerry, you're, um, you're not opposed to doing a deal with uh, Microsoft at the right price and at the right time, but what, just, what about just doing a search deal with them? It sounds like Microsoft doesn't want to buy Yahoo as a whole, they just want to buy the search business. You just talked about the synergies, so it seems like if you were to sell the search business, you hollow out the company, so there really isn't a way for a deal to happen. Or is there? Are you willing to just do a deal on search with Microsoft? I, I, um yeah, to be clear, the synergy I was talking about was having both display and search creating the synergies. And if you didn't have search, some of that synergy may not exist. But the, the point is um, that uh, uh, with Microsoft, we've been pretty clear. You know, if they want to buy the whole company, we're, we're around for that. And they've said they're not interested in doing that. Um, as far as the search deal goes, we, we are very open-minded about it. Um, I think in the, in the last iteration, it was an environment where we felt a, certainly the, the deal was not a very, uh, it was not a good deal for the company, but it doesn't mean that we won't do one. Um, and as we go through sort of uh, thinking about where we want to take the company in the future, uh, I, I think we, we remain open to everything. There's never, I guess what I would say is there's nothing that we would say absolutely no, we won't do anything towards, uh, but it has to make sense. And the way in which this whole thing played out this year, uh, there was a lot of distraction. If you remember, the search deal was in conjunction with a, with, a, with a Carl Icahn takeover bit of the company. I didn't so even was, get to Icahn. Let's talk about Carl. But you know, <laughs> I, it, so, so, so I, I just, I, I, I think that the way to think about it is that in a, in a normal environment, we're, we, sh we should talk like normal people, and that's absolutely true. Over here. Hey, Jerry, uh, Bob Peck of Barron Capital. I wanted to see if you could walk us through competition search going forward. So you have a couple billion of cash on your balance sheet. Google has five, Three. six times that, four or five times that. Um, you're spending about 700 million or so in CapEx a year. They're spending 3 billion or so. Your global search market share continues to come down as Google gains more and more share. So how do you financially compete going forward against a behemoth like Google without having some sort of huge financial partner, whether it be a Microsoft or somebody else? Can you just walk us through how you can compete and maintain share, gain share, particularly when it gets more complex with things like universal search? I, I didn't understand the universal search point, but, um, but. Well, universal I, search, I, I would imagine what you're saying there is universal search is even more expensive to, to, to oh, do the infrastructure okay. for, right? Yeah. Look, I, you know, I, one of the first things and, and, and very important things that I continue to look at is are we, are we capitalizing to compete in the businesses we're in? That's got to be something that we look at constantly. Um, we have, 
look at that question and, and feel that from a search standpoint, um, we're well capitalized. And I know that's something that people debate about, and certainly during the period of time in which uh, people are looking at Microsoft and Google and is this a capital game. Um, I, I continue to believe that search is largely uh, still innovation-based rather than capital-based. Um, and that uh, what, um, if you adjust it for our search share in the US, uh, we don't have the CapEx on our balance sheet for Asia for the most part, and certainly Japan, we don't, we, we don't have that. And our share in Europe is small. So when you adjust it for our share in the US and, and other parts of the world, we, we think we're spending per search share about the right amount of things against search. Um, we're not in maps the way that Google and Microsoft is. We're not in some of the other more capital intensive businesses uh, that I think creates um, uh, this delta between capital spend. Uh, but you know, we, we, we are not capital constrained, meaning that we don't sit around and say, geez, we shouldn't spend on CapEx because, uh, uh, because we, we, we don't have that product. You know, so for our product set and what we're offering, we, I think we're spending plenty. Is YOS one way to take off the CapEx balance sheet line item? In other words, if someone comes along and uses EC3 or an Amazon cloud service or something like that, and we didn't get to talk about cloud computing, I'm sorry about that. I know you really wanted to. Um, right, well, but uh, we've we got two sessions on it, which you can I, check out later. Which it uh, didn't include Yahoo. I know, we didn't, yeah, sorry. Um, but is that a way to take off balance sheet? In other words, someone comes along and does an amazing Yahoo you know, uh, mapping application that is better than Yahoo Maps, better than Google Maps, and, and builds it in, and, and hangs it off of Amazon's infrastructure, or something like that. Is that one of the reasons, like one of the goals with Yahoo OS is to, to try to create? It's clever, John, I, but that's not, I, I, I honestly, I think if that happens, great. But what we are actually offering is a hosted environment for applications and a hosted environment to run web services. So if you look at Boss, our, our bring your own search service, that is a web service model. That is a model where you know we host all the stuff that they want to run. Um, you know, in the weird way, Apt is a web service for advertising. So, um, so we actually are taking on more of the cloud and, and creating the grid and creating the infrastructure. Um, I I do think that um, uh, I do think that. You know, it takes a fixed amount of capital to compete, um, whether it's display or search. I think people have this notion that display is very non-capital intensive, and I think that's changing. The amount of optimization, the amount of testing, yes, the is. amount of algorithms behind it is absolutely becoming a, a, yeah. a much more search-like model. So, um, so I, I feel like we, we have a fixed critical mass to answer the gentleman's question. I think we have a critical mass of fixed capital that we will commit to do. We're, you know, I think we're the only person building data center in this economy right now, and um, we'll continue in the to middle do so. of the country, right? Well, I, 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 Nebraska, I, I, all around the world, as far, as far as I can tell. Yes, Nebraska, but um, but you know, once you hit that fixed, you know, I think then you have a choice: do you do you do you spend the capital to try to overspend and and, and create some sort of a, a capital advantage, or do you go down an innovation path? I would say that at Yahoo today, we're much more focused on. Uh, having critical mass capital to drive innovation on search than perhaps some of the others. But, um, you know, it's a strategy question, and we, we, we're we obviously are in the game to increase our search share, and until that happens, I know people are always going to be critical of what we're doing. Well, it gained a little bit in October. Yeah, I mean... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Jerry, Jim Breyer. How are you? Thanks hey, for doing this. Hey, Jim. So these are times where there's a lot of advice for entrepreneurs. And I'd be curious, given everything you've gone through, when you step back, if you were to start Yahoo today, what are the lessons you've learned? What advice would you be giving entrepreneurs? Um, I'd probably call you, Jim, first. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Get a room, is that common? Okay. Um, well, seriously, I, I think that, uh, obviously, um, I, I would argue that Yahoo came out of a very similar environment. Um, I think in, in the early 90s, we had a very bad environment, and certainly economy in, in Silicon Valley. And um, to have companies like ours come out, and then in the, in the late 90s, I, I would argue, uh, in the early 2000s, similar number of companies came out. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I would do too many things differently. I, I, would, certainly, um, uh, I would certainly look at, you know, sort of, the long term, and I think in this environment, it's very hard to look long term. And 
and maybe you always want to find a way in which you can, you can preserve and protect your company so that you can look long term. But um, I think in this environment, shareholders tend to be very short term. And so uh, I think that's part of the challenge of navigating a company through this, this tumultuous time, whether you're public or private, I think you have the same challenges. Uh, but to be, able, to be able to have that timing and, and have that time to execute a very long-term vision, um, that's, that's what's critical for entrepreneurial companies, and that's what's critical to be able to preserve. We've got another question over here. Yeah, uh, Christian Peterson from Progression Partners. Uh, you mentioned that you're not, gonna, you're not doing maps as uh, Google and Microsoft, but yet you've, you've done some, some interesting things around location. Uh, will, will what, I guess, what Riley calls where 2.0 uh, be strategic to you in the future, or are you just going to be a follower on that area? I'm sorry, I just did not understand the question. Will, will, will kind of geo and, and maps be strategic to you in your future, or will you just be a follower in that area? I, um, sounds like an easy question. I don't want to be a follower, so, uh, so <laughs> I have to choose the other path. Um, look, I, I feel that um, uh, I think that the, the Yahoo story that hasn't really been told and we have to execute in order to do it is that um, we do believe we're innovating. We do believe we're changing. We do believe we're changing the game. Um, it does get clouded through the external events that's happened to the company. But I'm a, I'm a strong believer, and I think people at Yahoo are strong believers that we're there to change a game and lead rather than whatever the, the, the metaphor is. And I'm, I'm sorry if I didn't catch all the question. But um, my personal belief is that um, if you're not in the game to win, you shouldn't be in the game. And I think that's uh, that's way. I try to encourage the whole company to think about, and I think that's um, how our leadership and how our key people are always thinking about it. And so um, to the extent that we can continue to find ways to leverage our scale, which I think people, um, when they step back and understand that Yahoo, uh, from a scale perspective, um, as we continue our transformation to become platform companies, um, that scale would play to our advantage, and, and it hasn't been in the past. And maybe that's why there was this perception that we're, we're following. Um, we don't intend to follow, and, and, and that's, that's my goal, and hopefully we can get there. Well, Jerry, uh, I think uh, I'm joined by everybody in wishing you very good luck in the next year. I think as goes you know, Yahoo, so goes a lot of our uh, you know, collective desire to see these things get better. So I wish you the best, and thanks. thank you very much for coming and, and facing the scrutiny of all of us. Uh, uh, thanks for having in, me here. In, in these trying times. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks.